Samira, it's such a pleasure having you here today. Thank you, the third year. I know, it's very <laughs> exciting. Yeah. Let's start uh, for the very few people who may not be familiar with, uh, with yourself. A little bit of background about you and yourself as a business. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Max Sector Brand Ambassador in Middle East and I'm the CEO of Max Sector Academy and uh, founder of So by Samira Olfat Lashes Brand and uh, Brushes, Makeup Brushes. Okay, excellent. So fingers in a lot of pies. Yes. <laughs> for want of a better term. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, you obviously have been building businesses for the last couple of years between the Max Factor Academy, yeah. your own brand. Talk to me about some of the challenges, if we focus on, let's say, your own brand for a moment, yeah. some of the challenges you've had in bringing that to market over the last couple of years and yeah. how you overcame those challenges. Yeah, so let me just tell you um, the, the most important thing that it was a huge issue for me before and now it's so much easier. It was like, how could I make people to know me and know what I do? So let's say 15 years ago when I started to be a makeup artist and I was trying to work and get people to know me, to get to know my work, it was not as easy as today because social media was not that strong. So you should have worked so hard, then probably maybe a magazine was interested to have an interview with you. So step by step, slowly but slowly, you could have get an exposure and get your name out there. But right now with the social media over the past few years, so it's so much easier for you to show yourself to, to other people if you mm. have a good content as well. So at the beginning it was very difficult. Everything was like super slow and step by step. But then the minute the social media came and people understood the value of social media and their work. Yeah. So it becomes so much easier to find your way out. But of course there is so many challenges as, as well. But most important thing is like using the right tools as well. So if I pick up on a couple of points, yeah. uh, because I've been speaking with uh, a number of other major brands here mm -hmm. um, over the last couple of days. Yeah. A lot of them have been very product focused first yeah. and they see the media element as, as a secondary support function mm -hmm. to the product that they have developed. Mm -hmm. Would you say that there is, you know, for companies as, we, as social media has become so mainstream, yeah. there's so much access to so much yeah. content and so many platforms that yeah. being a media company first, for yeah. want of, let's say, a better term, like obviously mm -hmm. being an influencer or whatever the case, yeah. but, but putting media at the front yeah. and then following up with, with the product distribution afterwards is a, a better strategy going into the future yeah. where you have an audience already to tap into or is it still yeah. all about the product? Well, I, I can just tell you about my experience. So if there is a face behind everything, mm -hmm. so for example, for myself, I was a makeup artist first, then I worked on my social media platform, and then I started doing my own branding. Mm -hmm. So that made so much more sense for people to see me first as a makeup artist who's growing, and then later on, I did my own branding. So that makes so much sense for people and who, whomever followed me as well. So I don't know about the companies that they don't have a face behind them. So for example, there is, there is a company that comes today and yeah. just started brand A. You know, if they don't have anyone behind it as a face of, you know, someone who was doing something related to mm -hmm. the brand, then I, I don't know if the social media would really work. But for a person who has a career and doing a brand according to his or her career, definitely the social media is first mm -hmm. and then it's the brand. That, that's really interesting because, you know, you see a lot of the big New York agencies. Yeah. Um, you know, famous individuals like Scott Galloway or Gary Vaynerchuk, and they're always the face of their own agencies or their own brands, I'd say. Exactly. Do you think it's more important to build a brand or to self-brand? Um, I would say self-brand. I mean, mm. you're talking to a person who did the <laughs> yeah. self-brand, so yeah, I would say self-brand. I mean, look at Pat McGrath, yeah. Charlotte Tilbury. So all of these people, Ta Guy Tang, mm. so all of these people, they created their own branding, so it's a, it's a self-branding. Okay, so when you are, let's say, looking at partners to collaborate with, mm -hmm. with brands, yeah. what process do you go through um, singling out who you want to work with and who, what projects you're going to pass on? Yeah, so um, it's actually a very good question because mm -hmm. I receive so many messages and emails that you know, the other, the, like, different companies want to collaborate, but to me, I collaborate with a brand that makes sense to my lifestyle, to mm -hmm. who I am, to what I do. So. If I like driving, you know, still is part of my life, I would definitely collaborate. But yeah. if I'm 
if I'm a person who is afraid of flying, you know, I yes. wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't really collaborate with like a jet company. Yeah. So it's something that is relevant to me, to my lifestyle and to my career. So I wouldn't go for the sake of, you know, getting a little bit of extra bucks. So I wouldn't go and do and it's content being creation. Authentic. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Because the followers that follow me, they know me over years. Mm -hmm. So it's not like they know me as being a blogger yeah. or an influencer. They know me from the time that I had only 1,000 followers, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, so talk to me about that process then. Obviously being very well known in the industry, a very famous face. What's the process been like or what steps have you taken to build your own personal brand yeah. over the last, let's say, The five most years? important thing is to be yourself. Mm -hmm don't try to copy others so if you start copying others you will be the copycat you don't have anything new to say the most important things without, which i realize from my social media platform that start working so much better is first people are interested to learn something from you secondly if you can make them laugh as well hmm. so if you can nail both of making them learn and making them laugh that's it you got it so any content that I created that it made people learn something and laugh about it, it was fantastic. Yes, I mean, that's what they say the internet's there for, knowledge, entertainment, or education. Exactly, and you're, exactly. You're knocking two yeah, of them yeah. out of the ballpark Exactly, there. so stay original, you don't yeah. have to copy other people, just, just be yourself, and don't sell your soul as well. So don't advertise things that you, know, you don't believe on, yes. you don't use them, don't sell your soul. Tell me a little bit about your online academy this is something a big project you've been working on for the last couple of years yes exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. talk to me a little bit about this um, it's an amazing e-learning platform mm -hmm. uh, because as you know everybody's busy these days and if they want to learn something else if they want to learn a new skills like everyone wants to go to a proper academy so what happened was when I created the Max Satur Academy a few years after I was receiving so many emails from mm -hmm. ladies in Saudi from Oman from Qatar that we cannot come to Dubai mm -hmm. for a month and stay a month to learn a skill. So what can we do? Can you come to ours? Yeah. And then that was the time it clicked for me. I was like, okay, so I'm going to create an academy, online academy, e-learning platform that people can actually learn makeup through the online academy and through a series of videos. Again, I received calls from people when we launched the project that, how does it work? Like, I just watched a, watch a um, video and then I'm going to learn. Like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go and watch a YouTube video. Why should I pay this amount of money yeah. to just watch your video? But it's basically, they're watching a video and then there is a one-on-one -on -one tutoring. So we are teaching mm -hmm. them one-on-one -on -one via all these video calls yeah. of what to do. So we are with them step-by-step, step, wherever they are. We are actually with them yeah. in their bedroom, in their office, anywhere that they are just turning on into yeah. the, the platform, they're logging into the platform. So then that was the time that they understood that it's not just a video, it's actually an, it's like a super, super private consultation of the makeup and yeah. how to do it. And yeah, it's been, it's been amazing. So how did you manage, let's say, with, with the growth that comes with that? Yeah keeping the intimacy of a one-on-one -on -one tutorial yeah. but having to do it online yeah so it's um it's uh, because we have a team mm. of so what any of our student who has been graduate for the past few years they start working with us as a makeup artist and then later on as a trainer mm. so obviously i cannot just be one-on-one -on -one to everyone yeah. so then i have a group of people that they are helping other other students to do and one-on-one -on -one sessions with them as well so and so where do you see this this going in the future where, where's the growth going to come from in this business? Um, so right now is uh, just on a desktop. Yeah. So, but later on we'll be uh, we'll be an app as well. Fantastic. And later on we'll be right now we have professional courses only. But okay, then later excellent. on we're going to have DIY as well. So for the person who wants to know how to do her own makeup, or yeah. just we are thinking of, for example, like someone just get into the app and then contact me. Says Samira, I need to get ready for my wedding. What am I going to do? So that's yeah. the time it will be like me or other students or other graduates to helping them as well. Yeah, amazing. So basically makeup artist in your home, just doing your makeup, but with your own hand. Can I ask then, where do you see the changes in technology taking place? Obviously, if you look at the likes of Blowout and Go, yeah. who have been hugely successful over the last couple of years, yeah. really kind of changed the, the salon. Changed everything. Yeah, changed yeah. everything. Yeah. Is there any, changes in technology obviously you're part of it really yeah. when we when we, being realistic you are part of this change that's taking place yeah. 
what, what, do you, what impact do you see technology having on the industry over the next couple of years? Do you think? Um, it's actually a little bit scary mm -hmm. because we don't know if a makeup artist is going to be replaced by a robot <laughs> or a machine or a printer. No, honestly. Yeah. So we, we really don't know. We really don't know what's going to happen. But what I, what I think that there are machines that they're creating. Mm -hmm. They're creating machines that you can, actually, you can actually put your face in the machine and then within a second you can have like super airbrushed. Wow. according to your feature and it's not very far away from yeah. you know imagination it's it's I'm, I'm sure it's already there I mean I've heard of it yeah. but it's not out there for public yet so it's on the testing phase so when you were launching your uh, product range your lashes obviously social and digital was a key part of the communication strategy mm -hmm. when you were trying to drive sales yeah. talk to me a little bit about that and, ha and the impact that let's say digital and social has had on helping you um, drive sales within that Huge business. impact. Yeah. Social media was a huge impact on my launching my mm -hmm. lashes because if I didn't have the, the followers that mm -hmm. I have and if I didn't have the people that they believed in me, I would have not been able to succeed on the production, on, on selling my products yeah. actually. So because they knew I'm a makeup artist, because I created the lashes and brushes, because they knew I'm a makeup artist, I've been a makeup artist for the past 15 years. Yeah. So. The challenging thing was because there are so many makeup brushes on the market, there's so many eyelashes on the market, and to me it was like, do I really want to do this? Mm -hmm. Do I really want to have another set of brushes out there or another, you know, eyelashes out there? And then I was like, yeah, why not? Because I'm actually a makeup artist. Yeah. So whatever I'm designing is by the knowledge of the beauty industry that I have, by mm -hmm. all these experience, the 15 years of experience in the makeup industry. So I'm going to create something specifically for different eye shapes. And I'm going to create a brush set specifically for the professional makeup artists. So when they buy one brush set, they don't have to buy anything else. So, yeah. So then, um, obviously, we're talking a little bit about the product and the process that you went through mm -hmm. there in order to create yeah. this, this unique offering you have. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the evolution of e-commerce and distribution. Obviously, with the space evolving so much, yeah. um, and a lot of brands would be used to going through distributors, mm -hmm on the ground here, which would have, let's say, brick and mortar outlets um, as, our pre, as our traditional form of distribution. Yeah. Do you think there's an opportunity for businesses like yourself to go mm -hmm. through e-commerce channels like whether it's either direct to consumer yourself yeah. or yeah. through third party online retailers like Sook or Noon or places like that? Um, to be honest, I'm not very expert on talking about this, but to me, Souk.com was a really good platform yeah. because they were having it in all over Middle East. So it was very easy for me to work with them. It was mm -hmm. so easy to be part of them. Yeah. So it was it didn't have a lot of complicated steps that I had to go through. Um, and the sales, as soon as I do like a promotion on the social media with the link of the online platform, it just works really well for me. Okay, amazing. Yeah. I have one final question for you then. Sure. As a business leader, mm -hmm. what is the one thing that keeps you up at night? Keeps you up at night? Well, it's just you always think of what to do next. Mm -hmm. Whatever that you do, whatever that you achieve, it's satisfying at that moment, but then you want to do something bigger. So basically you become your own competitor. So you want to be a better version of yourself in, in, in a real life and in your business. So that's something that it keeps me up thinking busy the whole time yeah. of like, what am I going to do next? Okay, excellent. Samir, it's been an absolute pleasure Thank having you. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. You so much.